Welcome back to Introduction to Computational Chemistry at Valparaiso University. In this session, I'm going to give an example of how to search for a transition state between two stable equilibrium structures. A Gauss view can be used to prepare input for this calculation that then gets submitted to Gaussian 09. First of all, some background. A transition state is an unstable equilibrium structure which is at the maximum energy along what's called the minimum energy reaction path connecting two stable equilibrium structures. In uh, courses you may have uh, talked about this where you have a molecule or a system in a reactant form and then it undergoes some kind of geometrical transformation that might involve the breaking uh, of bonds or the forming of new bonds or both and then that reactant is transformed into a product structure. Well, the reactant and the product are the stable equilibrium structures, and the transition state is the very unstable intermediate at the top of the energy hill along the reaction path that takes us from the reactant to the product. The energy difference between the transition state at the top of the hill and the reactant structure at the bottom of the hill is called the activation energy. Except under really special conditions, the structure of a transition state cannot, at least yet, in uh, 2015 be determined using experimental methods. However, by studying chemical reactions at varying temperatures, the activation energy can be measured by experiment. And here's where computational methods come in. Computational methods can be used to calculate the structure of a transition state, and that gives very useful insight into the mechanism of a chemical reaction. As well, it gives a predicted value for the activation energy, because if we know the reactant structure energy and the transition state structure energy, the difference gives the activation energy. And if the computed activation energy is in reasonable agreement with the measured activation energy, then we have pretty good confidence that the transition state that we've determined through a computational method matches what's really going on in the physical experiment. So, the example I'm going to use is one that we have encountered in previous sessions. Our previous Gaussian 09 optimizations of 1,3-butadiene conformers revealed to us two stable structures. We see on the left a simple diagram of the trans structure, and then on the right the gauche structure, which was just a very slight deformation out of the plane of the cis uh, structure that we originally started with. Now, presumably, uh, there's, there can be a transformation from the trans structure to the gauche structure through some kind of intermediate transition state. Uh, what's important about this in uh, the real world is that in order for 1,3-butadiene to be involved in cycloaddition reactions, uh, chemists are fairly certain that it has to first undergo conversion from the trans form, which is more stable, to this gauche form and then it can be involved in subsequent reactions leading to cycloalkanes or cycloalkenes. So we're going to use computational methods to try to find the transition state that connects these two structures. So what I have here, I've pulled up using Gauss view the two log files that came from the optimizations of on the left the trans uh, conformer and then on the right the gauche isomer. And for reasons that will become clear in just a minute, what's very important is in the view menu to display uh, not only the symbols, the chemical symbols, but also the numerical labels. And you have to do this separately for each window that you have open. You highlight the window, and then under the view menu, you click labels. And the reason I do this is it's critically important in setting up a transition state calculation that the atom numbering is consistent from the reactant molecule on the left, which is the trans, to the product molecule, which is the gauche conformer on the right. Because if the atoms are not consistently numbered, then you'll be calculating a transition state that will not involve the simplest pathway uh, between these two. So take a look on the left. You see the carbon backbone is atoms 1, 4, 6, and 8. And that's also true on the right in the gauche conformer, 1, 4, 6, and 8. And more importantly, we know that the reaction path involves rotation around the 4, 6 carbon-carbon single bond axis. And so if we were to rotate the molecule on the left about that axis, then the carbon number 1 would move over to the right-hand side. The 4 and the 6 would stay fixed, but number 1 would move to the right-hand side. 
it would take along with it atoms 2 and 3, the hydrogens, and then atom 5 would flip over to the left. And if we compare what's on the left with what's on the right, we see that that's exactly correct. Right? That rotation would take atom number 5, the hydrogen, over to the left where it would sit underneath atom 7, like it does, and then atom 2 would flip over to the right and sit underneath atom 9, like it does. And so uh, these two structures have consistent uh, atomic numbering in order then for us to calculate the transition state between them. All right, how do we do this? We'll leave those windows open for a moment. What we're going to do under the file menu is open up a new molecule group, create molecule group, and this will form the input file for our transition state calculation. What actually we do is we're going to paste into this new window not one structure but two different structures. One will be for the reactant and the other will be for the product. So how does that work? Well we go to the reactant structure window over here and then under the edit menu we click copy and then we go to the new empty window and we go under edit we click paste and it pastes add to molecule group that's our choice so it should have added to it correctly there we go all right and now we're going to go to the product structure over here which is the gauche we're going to copy that and then we're going to go back to the window here that has our transition state input and now under edit we're going to paste and paste add to molecule group and what happens now, which is kind of interesting, is now we have an input file that contains two structures. The first structure was the trans. Now it's oriented a little bit differently from the way I had it in the window, which is okay. And then in the second, we have the gauche. And so these two, we've already checked out that the atomic numbering is consistent. So this now is the input file for the transition state optimization. So we now go to calculate, Gaussian calculation setup. All right, now we have to do a number of things here. We have to get the correct job type because we're not doing energy. We're going to do opt plus freak again so that when our optimization is done, we'll get the frequency calculation automatically. We're optimizing not to a minimum here, but we're optimizing to a transition state. And there are, let's see what's happening here. All right, if, yeah, minimum. All right, TS, and we're, we're using an algorithm that's called the QST2 method, which stands for quasi-synchronous transit with two structures. What Gaussian will do is it will take the initial structure and the final structure and generate an intermediate structure by doing a linear interpolation of all of the bond lengths and the bond angles between those two structures. It will then determine an initial guess for what the transition state will look like and then it will proceed to do an optimization to a transition state which means it's going uphill in energy to try to find that structure at the top of the energy hill. And when you do this kind of a calculation, as we saw in a previous uh, attempt using the 1,3-butadiene, it's really important to get accurate force constants. And I'm going to try to do this using once. Sometimes, if this doesn't work, we may even go back and try to use always. That's a more expensive method. That's a more expensive method, but it can be helpful in cases where it's difficult to optimize to a transition state. So. We're going to try once. Now, those should all be fine. The method, we're going back to, all right, and the default method, of course, is Hartree-Fock, but since these two structures were generated using the AM1 method, I'm going to be consistent and try to use the AM1 method to find the transition state between them. All right, title. There is no title. I'm going to put TS for trans gauche one three butadiene all right so that's what we're looking for link zero checkpoint file that will use the default name uh, because then whatever name we give the input file that will generate a checkpoint file general nothing really that we need to do here guess default and so on all right so this should set us up to do the optimization method for a transition state. Submit, 
save the input file. Okay, I'm going to give it a file name, which will be QST2. That's the method. 1,3-butadiene, uh, and then underscore AM1, because that's the actual theoretical method that we're using. All right, so that's my file name. Save it. I've already done this calculation, and so I'm, I have a file that exists with the same name. So I'll overwrite it and then submit this calculation to Gaussian. And we will see what happens. Now, these calculations could take uh, a longer time than doing a simple geometry optimization to a minimum energy structure, uh, because the calculation has to explore intermediate geometries that are not uh, uh, minima in energy, but work their way up the potential energy hill to get to a maximum. And the general rule in computational methods is it's much easier to search downhill in energy to reach a stable equilibrium structure than it is to search uphill in energy for an unstable structure. All right, but the calculation is finished. We'll look at the intermediate geometries. All right, so it took 11 steps. And of course, the first structure that we see is the initial one that we gave it, uh, only we didn't give it. What happened here was that Gaussian, uh, because we gave it the reactant and the product structure, Gaussian used an intermediate structure that you can see has a dihedral angle of just about 90 degrees, which makes sense because in the case of the trans, we've got that dihedral angle of about 180 degrees between carbon atom 1 and carbon atom 8, while in the product structure over here, we have that angle being close to 0 degrees between the atom 1 and the atom 8. All right, So it makes sense that Gaussian would start out, and I'll display the atom numbers so we can see how these things match up. OK, I'll rotate just a bit to get back to the atom 1 view, OK, so that the dihedral angle connecting atom 1 with atom 8 is just about 90 degrees for a rotation around the 4, 6 axis. So that, that kind of makes sense. That's the starting structure. And if we scroll through, we'll see that, wow, it looks like that was a pretty darn good guess because the geometry of the molecule isn't changing much. And when it gets to step 11, it looks pretty similar to what it was in the initial guess. All right, But as always, the only way we know for sure whether or not this structure is the one that we want, in this case a transition state, is to look at the vibrational output. And sure enough, look at this, OK? This looks very hopeful, because there is an imaginary frequency. For mode number one is, is listed as a negative frequency, which means it's imaginary. And so we can animate this. And what we should see, if we've optimized to the correct transition state, we should see some kind of rotation about that 4, 6 axis that would take the carbon atom 8 from one side to the other of the vertical plane. So let's see what happens. Hey, that's great. Look at that. It's exactly what we would expect. So as, as the mode is animated, we can see that carbon atom 8 gets progressively closer to atom 1 and then further away from it. And it involves, there's of course other atomic motions involved, but it involves a rotation, at least in part, around that 4-6 bond axis. So what have we determined? We found the transition state structure for the reaction, and it's a very simple reaction. It's really just a confirmation change between the trans and the gauche uh, conformers of 1,3-butadiene. Now, let's look at the spreadsheet that has all of these energies pasted in. All right, so the structure that we just found, I've listed this up here in the top part of the spreadsheet as TGTS, right? The trans gauche transition state. And as it should as it should be, the energy is is uh, higher than either the trans or the gauche energies. It should be higher. So, when we calculate the relative energies and convert them to kcals per mole, the trans is at 0, the gauche, which is the product is at 0.767, the, and the transition state is at 1.96. And so that makes sense. Now, I went ahead and repeated this optimization for the transition state using the other two methods, the Hartree-Fock 321G, small basis set, 
method, and then the B3LYP631GD method that involves a larger basis set and does a more sophisticated treatment of electron-electron interactions. And what you see qualitatively, of course, is the same, but the quantitative results are different. If you look at the energy barrier for this reaction using the AM1 method, it would be the energy difference between 1.96 and 0, or approximately 2 kcals per mole. Whereas for the Hartree-Fock 321G method, we get an energy barrier of approximately 5.6 kcals per mole, and for the density functional method with the larger basis set, it's even a little bit larger, about 7.5 kcals per mole. So, in order to plot these in some kind of graphical fashion, what I did was I uh, pasted those energies in down below in the order it would take me from trans to the transition state to the gauche. And so then I plotted these relative energies on a potential energy diagram like this. And this is a useful way of visualizing the results. You see that we use the trans energy as the energy reference. And so for all three methods, that's the zero of the energy that I've plotted here. We see in the lowest plot the AM1 results. The transition state is up here right around 2 kcals per mole. And then the, the gauche conformation is a little bit below 1 kcal per mole. And then progressively, we see the energies go higher and higher as we go to more and more sophisticated methods. So. You get the basic idea here for how to search for a transition state between two equilibrium structures, in this case the trans and the gauche conformers, and to find the transition state that connects them. So, good luck as you continue your study of computational chemistry.